So after years of dreaming, after your husband, wife, boyfriend or girlfriend has told you off for the upteenth time for making racing car noises at the dinner table, or if you've simply lost your mind, you've decided to bite the bullet, take the plunge and start racing cars for the first time in your life. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Aaron and uh, this is my channel, The Inner Racer. So for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, for this year, the first time in my life, I've decided to embark on a season of car racing here in the UK and this channel has been documenting my, uh, my journey uh, throughout my racing season so far. Um, and you know, for those of you who have been watching, there have been quite a few ups and downs, uh, but it's mainly been focused around uh, the racing action itself. So for this video, I've decided to take uh, a different approach and go into a bit, a bit of detail about the budgeting side of a typical racing season or your first season of car racing. So when it comes to life, there are three inevitabilities. That's uh, death, taxes, and needing money to go car racing. So first things first, let's begin with the end in mind. So the end in this case being the end of your first season of car racing. Uh, so before you embark on this journey, the first thing I'd advise you to think about is how much money do I want to spend at the maximum during the course of this season. So when it comes to budgeting for your season of car racing, yep, like the joke you are, you are literally going to be burning money. So there are so many things that you need to consider when it comes to budgeting for the season ahead. And here's a list of, uh, of things that I have uh, I had to budget for myself and that you will need to as well. Um, so I might have missed a few things off, but here's, here's a basic list. So there's purchasing the car, you've got championship registra registration fees, uh, race license fees, race entry fees, pre-season testing, in-season testing, transporting your car to and from each race, uh, whether you do, and if you do that yourself, you're gonna need a, a trailer. Um, if you're going to engage the services of a racing team or another service, you're going to need to budget for that. Uh, you need accommodation for each race weekend. There's crash repairs, mechanical repairs. If you want to be competitive, um, you are going, going to need to consider driver coaching. Also a level of simulator at home. You know, it can be a PlayStation or it can be, you know, a specialist simula simulator that costs thousands of pounds. Um, you've got tires and consumables like brake pads. You've got tools, you've got racewear. You've got beer and beer tokens to hydrate yourself and uh, you know refuel yourself during any given race weekend. You've got uh, club membership fees. So if you're club racing like I am, you'll need to pay a yearly registration fee or club membership fee to, to join that club. There's your transponder, which is needed to track your lap times and where you are on the circuit. Uh, and there's the, re the yearly registration for that any modifications you need to uh, make to your race car in order to make it eligible for the championship you're racing in. There are other items like data loggers, such as V-boxes and the like, which are very powerful tools and, you know, I'd say almost essential if you want to be competitive. So as you can see, the list is quite long. And during the course of this video, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about what you'll need to budget for in terms of those items. I'm not gonna go into specific amounts because that will vary depending on the championship that you're racing in. Uh, but I will go into amounts where, you know, the cost will be generic regardless of what championship you're racing in, such as getting your racing license, for example. So step one, the very first step is deciding the championship that you want to race in. So deciding on the championship you want to race in is dependent on your budget, your level of racing experience, and your level of racing ambition. So if I apply those three factors to myself, in an absolutely ideal world, I would buy myself you know, a pro-am seat uh, for a team racing in the World Endurance Championship. So I've got the opportunity to try and work my way up to racing at the Le Mans 24 hours. But number one, I don't have the budget for that at the moment. Um, and number two, do I have the talent for that level of racing? I don't know. So there's a mismatch between my budget and my level of racing amb ambition and experience, arguably. Nevertheless, that hasn't stopped me from achieving my dreams of going racing. So I just had to be a bit more inventive and open-minded about uh, where I want to race uh, for my first season. So for me personally, I decided to race in a club racing championship here in the UK. And based on the factors that I just mentioned, 
I decided to race in the Caterham Motorsport Championship. So first reason being it's a championship that's designed for novice racers. So I've got no car racing experience, but for a couple of years previously, I've raced in a, an arrive and drive karting championship called the Club 100 Championship here in the UK. Another reason that I decided to join this championship is that Caterham's championships are very clearly tiered. So if, for example, I decide to move up a tier um, and move on to the next uh, championship level next year, I'll simply have to make a few relatively simple uh, mo modifications to my car, then my car will be eligible to race in that championship. I won't have to buy a brand new one and sell my existing one, for example. So they make it quite easy to, you know, progress through the championships. In addition to that, there's a large community of racers and people who have been involved in the championships for many years. So they're a good source of information and any advice that you need to go embark on your racing journey, both before uh, signing up to the championship and during the season itself, which is very helpful. And when it comes to budgeting, I found that the cost of parts for my race car uh, were very transparent, as well as the race entry fees, the championship registra registration fees, and the race uh, support fees that I needed to pay in order to race for this year. So that was all extremely transparent and helped immensely with my budgeting. And not only that, but I'm big on goals. So I've got a, a list of goals that I want to achieve throughout my life, as well as a collage of goals uh, that I have in, in picture form. And racing Caterhams uh, has been on that list of goals and on that collage for about 10 years, 10 years now since I went to watch a Caterham race at Brands Hatch in 2012 when the Caterham Academy were racing. And I was so impressed that, um, yeah, that's a goal that I wanted to achieve for, uh, for a long time. And when the time was, I felt the time was right as it was, as it was this year, I decided to take the plunge and go for it. So when it comes to you making the decision as to what championship you want to race in, based on your budget and maybe some other factors, uh, for a start, there are literally hundreds of club championships that you can race uh, with here in the UK. So for the casual motorsport, motorsport fan, you might think that Formula One is the only you know, form of motorsport in the world. But here in the UK alone, there are literally hundreds of championships that you can race in. Now, when it comes to deciding which championship you can race in, uh, looking online will be your first port of call, an easiest port of call for, for research, first of all. Uh, so in terms of online resources to recommend, first of all, I recommend uh, looking at the Motorsport UK website. So that will have that website will have details of different racing clubs uh, and championships that you can race in. Um, I'd also do you know a simple Google search for uh, UK club racing championships or UK racing clubs. And you know, as you go through those pages and do that research over, over how long, however long you have that you want to do that research for, you'll get an idea as to you know, the type of car that you want to race and the type of championship that you want to race. All these car club racing championship websites should have high level details of championship registration fees, race entry fees, the cost of purchasing the car, ideally the cost of purchasing any uh, parts, um, and any generic information such as the cost of purchasing uh, a racing license or the, t the cost of doing the test for your racing license. So once you've done your research and compared a number of these championships, that should give you a rough idea and give you a basis uh, for how much uh, that aligns with your budget that you're willing to, uh, to, to spend on your season of car racing. Now, if during your research you found a number of car racing championships that you're potentially interested in and the websites don't have as much information that you'd like about the costs I've just mentioned, um, ideally there should be details of a championship coordinator on the website or websites um, with, their, with that championship coordinator's phone number and email address. So if you, if you don't have the information or you feel you don't have the high level costing information that you need to make a decision, simply give the championship coordinator a call or an email um, and organize a chat with them to get the costs that you're looking for. So once you've decided on your budget and you've done some research on the championship you've wanted to race in, done a short list of the championships that you want to race in, and have made a final decision about the championship you want to race in, the next step, and perhaps the most important one, is purchasing your racing car. Now, when it comes to purchasing your racing car, you've got two options, two quite simple options. You can either buy the car outright uh, with cash or 
buy the car on finance. Now I'm not FCA certified, so I'm not gonna go into massive details about this. If you're gonna purchase the car outright with cash, just make sure that you're comfortable with the initial capital outlay. Now, depending on your situation, position in life, or just preferences, uh, you may be just looking to purchase a race car, ride it into the ground, and won't really care about its residual values when it comes to selling the car, if that's something you plan to do. But you know, if racing the car is something that you plan to do for a little while and residuals, the residuals of the racing car or the future value of the racing car is something that you're interested in, uh, make sure you do some research on that uh, before you purchase it so that you know when it comes to selling the car one, two, three, or however many, however many years down the line, um, you know, will have a rough idea of what you'll get back for the car if you plan to sell it, if that's something that matters to you. So when it comes to purchasing your car, via finance, there are a few more factors that you need to take into account when purchasing the car. The biggest of which will be your personal personal cash flows because you will be purchasing the car using uh, monthly payments. So just make sure you can afford those monthly payments, uh, whatever those monthly payments are, depending on the deposit that you've uh, put down and the term of the finance agreement because those are the two factors that alter or affect the amount that you're going to be paying monthly. Another thing I would recommend when it comes to purchasing any car on finance is to read the finance agreement from front to back before signing on that dotted line. Um, just make sure you read every single clause. Um, make sure that if there's any clause or any phrase uh, or any anything in, the, in that agreement that you're not sure about, uh, highlight them or make a note of them and arrange to speak with your car dealer or person from the finance company uh, to ensure that you're clear on what those clauses or items mean uh, and you're yeah, just basically clear about them before, uh, before signing yourself into a, into a multi-year agreement. And also before going into a finance agreement, you know, think about what your exit strategy is uh, if your circumstances should change. So for example, if you sign up for a three-year car finance agreement, for example, think to yourself before signing on the dotted line, okay, what are my exit options or what's my exit strategy if I want to get rid of the car or take myself out of that finance agreement in year one or year two or any time throughout that three year period, what are my options? Um, and just be very clear about how much it would cost you uh, to extricate yourself from that agreement if you need to. So that's probably one of the biggest uh, items to think about before uh, getting into a, any finance agreement, regardless of, of whether it's for a race car or not. So once you've decided on your budget, the championship you want to race in, and you've purchased your race car, next up is your racing license, which you will need to purchase if you want to race your car in any circuit in the UK. In order to do that, you'll need to take an ARDS test. I think ARDS stands for Association of Racing Driver Schools, um, I think. Now, much like your road uh, car license, the ARDS test consists of a theory test and uh, a test on track as well. So the first step you'll need to take in order to get your racing license is to buy a Go Racing Pack, which is uh, one of these. Now these retail for around £99 I think and you can purchase them from any uh, sort of motorsport specialist retailer like Demon Tweaks and I've seen them on eBay um, and the Motorsport UK website as well. And this contains all of the information that you'll need in order to pass the theory aspect of your uh, racing license test. So once you've consumed that information and you've decided that you're ready to take the theory test, so when it comes to your ARDS test, the uh, the theory and practical are done on the, on the same day. So once you've consumed this and you've decided you're ready, you can go online and book your ARDS test. So I believe that you can book your ARDS test at uh, a number of uh, race circuits throughout the UK, certainly a number of MSV uh, racing circuits do it. So for me personally, my nearest racing circuit is uh, Brands Hatch. Um, and I looked on their website uh, the other day and I think you can do your arts test there for about £279 if I'm not mistaken at the time of uh, recording this video. Uh, so yeah, the cost for doing your arts test will be there or thereabouts around that ballpark figure. And then once you've passed that test, both the fit, written and, uh, and the practical, uh, you'll get one of these which is your racing license. 
and you're officially a racing driver and you're free to race on track. That's a wrap for now. As you can see from my list earlier in this video, there are way too many racing budget related items to cover in one episode. So I'll be covering additional budget related items in my next videos. I'm conscious that there hasn't been much on track action for a while, so that'll be explained in further episodes. Please comment below if you have any questions, show some love if you like what you see, and subscribe to see more. See you soon.